Here's an interesting one about a husband and father who is on the fence about divorcing his wife after finding out and discovering that she's been, uh, at the very least, em having an emotional affair, cheating on him with an old friend with benefits. Now, I doubt it's just emotional affair, but I found that they've been exchanging spicy pictures, videos, telling what they want to do to each other, all that. And to make matters worse, she's also been posting on Reddit all these spicy pictures and videos, talking to all these guys, and blaming the fact that, uh, you know, they have a toddler, so things are tough, and she's lonely and sleepless nights because of, you know, waking up to feed the kid at 2 o'clock in the morning and all that, and has no accountability for this. This is blaming her therapist. She says it's her therapist's fault for not helping her handle the situation better, so, you know, woe is me, that type of thing. And it's a big mess. I'd be very good to go over here just to show you the whole, you know, again, no accountability and how you cannot, you have to pay attention to what your girl's doing and once a cheater, always a cheater, you need to kick him to the curb. But you also see this guy, this is his second marriage. Clearly, he hadn't learned the first time. Title, I caught my wife posting uh, spicy pictures on subreddits and sexting her ex. And a big shout out to Sheik for sending me this story. It says here, it's a sad day to be posting here again. This is my second marriage after a mess of a first, and the idea of being married now or even is losing an appeal. It's appeal. Anyway, for context, I've been with my wife, a 28-year-old female, for eight years. You married her when you were when she was 20 years old. Smack, she's a fucking kid. Legally, she's not a kid, but nowadays, typical 20-year-olds are kids. We have a toddler with a slight condition that makes raising him a little more difficult than it already should be. My wife stays at home since I make enough money, luckily, but this has led to her social network dwindling since she quit her job and had a child. We're at the point now that where life isn't constantly cleaning bottles and midnight feedings, so we're getting more sleep at least and feeling human once again. We split chores and baby time to keep things fair as well. Along the way, it's been, I've been supportive as I can by introducing her to my friends' wives, a few of my family members, and agreeing to watch our son at certain times just to give her some time to go out and make friends. Hey, anybody that has, has children or has a newborn knows it's really hard and stressful. And all that. I don't have any kids, but I have family that do, that do, obviously, and know what they went through. But it doesn't give her an excuse to do what you're all about to hear. Because he certainly wasn't doing that. My wife hasn't been able to make any any real friends. Well, maybe because she's an a-hole. And she goes to therapy but hasn't been impressed by it. The last few months, we've seen to be fighting more often. She seems checked out and is easily angry with me when things in general get stressful. Usually that's a sign that something's going on behind the scenes. When we fight, I communicate why I'm hurt by her and when I didn't do anything wrong. Usually our son is stressing her out and she begins yelling at me since I'm the only one around. Yeah, you're the only one around, and also you obviously take it. You figure, oh, it's hard on her, so I'm just going to let her yell at me and all that. I don't get any indication that you put her in her place to stand up for yourself in the way that you should. Which is going to make any woman lose respect for you. But also, she's just an a-hole, and we all know, well, you're about to find out what she's doing behind the scenes, which makes her even more resentful of him. After a few months of this, we had a big heart-to-heart. -heart. It seemed really productive to where we got even got a babysitter and went on a wonderful date the next day. We both raved about how much fun it was, like before we had a kid. She complained about how few friends she still had, and that it sucks because women make terrible friends, but guys only want ever want SEX. Right here, she admits women make terrible friends. Al Bundy, don't try to understand women. Women understand women, and they hate each other. But this was just a light conversation on the way home. When we got home, I noticed that her Snapchat, I noticed her on her Snapchat a lot which we usually use when talking to our families. I saw a name I did not recognize, though. And, of course, you can see where the plot twist is going. I asked who is she messaging, thinking it was some uncle or something, but she lied. She said it was her brother, but clearly it was not. So I followed up with, no, who's John Smith? You'd think that she saw a murder as her face froze so bad. The next few hours were the trickle truth playbook, as it is so common. Of course you're getting the trickle truth. But basically, what I saw her her ending their long-distance affair with John. Ironically, she felt so good after our heart-to-heart -heart conversation that she was caught doing the right thing. He's saying that in quotes. If you can call that. If she ghosted him or kept messaging him when I was asleep, I might e never even caught it. So what happened exactly? John, that's his, nick that's his code name, 
was an old friend of benefits from before we met. They always keep tabs on their bad boys or their, or their friends of benefits. They never dated officially because she wasn't ready to settle down, so they just had SCX and hung out back then. He reached back out to say hi after years of no contact, and she humored him because she was feeling lonely in her work. That's no freaking excuse. I'm sure this guy's stressed out too and feeling lonely because his wife isn't treating him right, and he's not reaching out to old girlfriends or whatever. She, w she just liked having someone else to talk to at first when I was at work all day. Bullshit. She wanted that the, the flirting and the, and the spicy activities and the attention and validation. Bullshit. However, she quickly made things sexual and sent nudes of herself. Goodbye. It's over. Yeah, you, sh you can't have a regular conversation. You got to send spicy pictures. Yeah, uh-huh. It ain't just lonely, honey. He, of course, reciprocated as that's probably why he reached out in the first place. For five months, they alternate between innocent talking and sexting over Snapchat. This was usually short videos, a few pictures, and dirty talk. Things like, I want to bend you over, or yeah, I bet I'd f that would feel amazing. Soon, that wasn't enough for her, and she started posting on local NSFW subreddits for more attention. What I tell you about attention and validation is a freaking drug. And before anybody starts thinking, oh, that's making an excuse for them, no, no it's not. <clears throat> she sexted maybe another dozen guys she met from there, mainly to talk dirty and some nudes. This all went on for about five months to my knowledge. This poor guy. She is done. It's over. She's disqualified herself as a wife. Problem is, he's on marriage number two. And Chloe didn't learn enough from the first time things went wrong. If you saw my previous post, I have a low tolerance for cheating these days. You should have a low tolerance all days. My wife knows this. She says she did the minimal effort to get the attention and excitement she wanted from them. So simple, faceless nudes, selfies, video playing with herself, some dirty talk, etc. Oh, well, that makes you feel so much better since it was just, you know, minor stuff, honey. Sure. Doesn't sound minor to me. So here's my predicament. I warned her that I have zero tolerance policy after my last marriage. <laughs> yeah, and she probably laughed her ass off at you. She should have known better anyways, but especially after sharing that ordeal, I wouldn't have expected this from her. But my issue is that if I were to ever forgive her, this is basically the extent that I could. If it wasn't physical, I definitely couldn't, and I know that. Smack, bro. No, there's no going back from this. And I'm sure there was physical going on. You just haven't got to that part. Remember the whole trickle truth thing? And even if she wasn't getting physical, who cares? She's making a complete ass out of you and your marriage and your family by doing this. And do you think she's ever going to change? Do you think that craving for attention and validation to make her feel hot is ever going to change? She's a couple years from 30. She's had a kid. She needs to know constantly that she's still desirable after having a kid and having the baby body and all that type of thing. And wait till she turns 30 and then in her 30s and 40. She's not going to change. Once a cheater, always a cheater. And that again, that craving for attention and validation. You, Ross Geller, because he's this guy's like Ross Geller from Friends, because he's about to be divorced a second time, need to end it. Otherwise, she's going to make a complete fool of you. I love my son and did love my wife, but knowing that she's capable of this has killed me. Looking back on fond memories, especially any in the last five months, feel hollow or even tainted. Yeah, because you have to question your whole marriage to her. Some nude, some nude she used had lingerie that I bought for her, which kills me. I don't want to break up this family, but staying together for the kids never works either. So my question is, what would you do and how would you feel in my shoes? I'd feel like complete crap if I was in your... Not that I'd be in your shoes, but I'd feel like complete crap if I was in your shoes. That's understandable. What I would do is end it, okay? The baby's a toddler. He's not going to remember a whole lot. And you do what you can, but you can't stay with her. Otherwise, it's going to get worse. She's already switched therapists, and she believes that that was a factor. Her last one never solved things, just, just to let you vent, and offered to get rid of her smartphone to reduce temptation. She's been pretty open with me and answered all my questions as well now. She seems to grasp the levity of it now, though if she didn't really before, I wish she had, instead of thinking this was even sort of okay. So she's blaming the therapist. Well, the, ther the therapist should have helped me better, but but didn't enough, so that's why I posted things on Reddit or whatever. Bullshit. She's full of crap. And taking away her smartphone. Good luck there. So let's go get another one. Okay? No, it's over, bro. And I know you don't want to go through a second divorce. Be like Ross Geller. But you are forbidden from getting married ever again. Okay? You're Clearly your choice in women is terrible. And clearly you have something about you just attracts these types. 
And since you are a relationship guy, we'll no doubt do that again. I would take your time to really work on you. Figure out what it is about you that attracts these types and things you're doing wrong that obviously shows weakness to them to them to behave that way. And obviously knowing that you can't, you have to always pay attention to red flags, not allow bullshit. Sounds like you let a lot, a lot, a lot, you let a lot of shit slide during when things are difficult and it just escalated with more disrespect and her being an a-hole towards you. I get it stressful with a toddler and all that and a baby. Sure, but come on. That behavior, not cool. And if not, this will continue. But how much suffering do you have to go through to understand that? So you need to end it with her and move on. If you don't, the odds are very likely she'll continue on exactly what she's doing. She'll do the I'm sorry crap in the beginning, but eventually just be better at covering up her tracks. Learn, amigo.